welcome everybody to another episode of All That's Kerala, a chat along the backwaters. This is, by the way, the 13th episode of this fortnightly program, which we have every two weeks, every Saturday uh, in the evenings, normally at eight o'clock. This uh, program is fueled by, uh, by city book leaders and the Kerala Museum. Uh, Kerala Museum is in, uh, as all of you know, is in, is in Edapalli, Kochi, and City Book Leaders is based in Delhi. And Mohit Gupta is its conceptualizer. It's, it's everything. Now, All That's Kerala is a program that tries to introduce Kerala to the world, to India, and of course, to people uh, in Kerala itself. I must particularly thank Mohit Gupta for the conceptualization of the program and for seeing it through all these 13 uh, episodes. I must also thank Aditi Nair. I think she is not here with us today. But Aditi Nair is the one who leads Kerala Museum, and she's the person who has been supporting us in uh, matters of culture, of uh, arts, uh, of uh, cinema, etc. So even though Aditi is not here, let me welcome her and thank her uh, on my personal behalf. Today's episode. Now, once upon a time in India, newspapers was something that none of us could do without. It was like the morning cup of tea, morning cup of coffee, you had uh, to have your morning newspaper, just as you ha must have had your coffee and tea. It was an addiction with all of us. And each of us had our very special selective brands of uh, coffee and tea. And similarly, we had our selective brands of newspapers. Uh, those in Chennai, those in the South had the Hindu as their addiction. Those in Mumbai and many parts of the North had uh, had the Times of India. And then, of course, if you were in Delhi, then it was the Hindustan Times. Mohit Gupta will bear me out. It was the Hindustan Times in Delhi. You had to read the Hindustan Times if you were in Delhi. And for those of us in Kerala, there was this unavoidable Malayala Manorama. It doesn't matter whether you are a, you are a Marxist or a, or a BJP or a, or a congressman, you had to read the Malayala Manorama every morning. Uh, that was something that it was, I mean, it was standard. Political education in Kerala in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s happened largely through the reading of newspapers. Tea shops, where the village crowd gathered to have their morning tea. Somebody would read out a newspaper aloud, and the others would listening in, coming in with their comments, talking about the news that was being read about. Everybody had their comments. That is what newspapers meant to all of us. That's all changed now. The first challenge was TV. Initially, there was Doordarshan, which nobody really bothered about. And then the 24-7 news channels happened. You had news around the clock, even at midnight, at 1 o'clock, at 2 o'clock. And there was this constant breaking of news, breaking news. Happened every 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And that started to replace the newspapers as the giver of news, as the purveyor of news. But today, as our guest, we have a descender. One who believes and asserts very convincingly that the newspaper will not die. He believes that the newspaper will survive. And that person who says it is not somebody ordinary. He has been in the business of newspapers for over three, three and a half decades now. He has spent a lifetime with the Times of India group and intends to spend another lifetime with the Dinathandi group in Chennai. He is the CEO of DT Next. DT Next, N-E-X-T, spelled out in capital letters, is the English language newspaper of the, the Dinathandi group published from Chennai. He is Sri Nainan Tharian, an authority on the business of newspapers. Welcome, uh, Sri Nainan Tharian, to the 13th episode of All That Kerala Chat Along the Backwaters. Thank you. I had always thought that 13th was very unlucky for me. Uh, but for all that Kerala, for this, 13 is a very lucky number. We're lucky to have you as our guest, Mr. Naina. Thank you for being with us. You proved to me that 13 is no longer unlucky. And before I start my chat with him and sort of put my first question to him, I'd like to tell all our viewers that he's here in his personal capacity. So none of the views he's going to express are going to be the views of either the Times of India or of the Dhanathandi group of newspapers or of DT Next. With that caveat, let me uh, 
start my conversation with Sri Nainan Karyan. As I said, once upon a time in India, newspapers used to dominate the media. The media meant the newspapers, the, me the newspapers meant the media. But today's newspapers are a ghost of their past glory. What has changed? Did the concept and the very definition of the media itself change? Did the industry not see this change coming? What, what happened that made this big difference? What is your uh, response to the question why the past glory of the newspapers has changed so very much, uh, Mr. Tharia? Um, thank you, Mr. Joseph. Newspapers have seen a lot of turbulence even in the past. And uh, whenever there is a new media vehicle which was which is coming to life, whether it was television or radio, people were in a hurry to write the you know the obituary of newspapers. I remember when television was introduced in India, many people thought that's the end of radio. Today, similarly, people are talking about how theaters are going to have a natural death with OTT platform. But all of them will survive. Only thing is they need to find new ways of survival. Newspapers, as you rightly said at the, in the introduction, that they were a sort of a chore product. It was a ritual. You, it's like you're doing your puja in the morning or having your coffee in the morning. Newspapers were a compulsory habit of people. Now with many other options available, it is moving away from a chore segment to a leisure segment, at least among youngsters. Some of the youngsters don't even consume newspaper. It's a fact. But newspapers are not in the business of paper. They are in the business of news. So as long as news is relevant to people, newspapers can continue. They may have to modify their models. No, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Tharian, for that. It's a business, as you said. It's a business of news, not the business of paper, very rightly put. But it is business. And if it's a business, uh, particularly in a business like newspapers, or for that matter, any business, no business can run without profits. Has the financing structure of newspapers been at fault that these profits should profit so much uh, when re readership falls? Yeah, readership falls, there can be, but the business of newspapers mm -hmm. has been such that its finances have become very dependent upon advertisers. What is your comment on that? See, one of the uniqueness about uh, newspapers in India is that our cover price is, is the, the, the lowest in the world. Even in Sri Lanka, our neighboring country, newspaper costs 30 Sri Lankan rupees. That is roughly about 15 rupees. In America, it's two to three dollars. Whereas we are selling it at at, on an annual subscription basis, it comes to less than two rupees, sometimes even one rupee. This was a model which suited at that point in time. So a lot of newspapers, 80 to 90% of the revenue comes from advertising. So therefore readers were subsidized by advertisers. So it was almost free. Why it wasn't given free, absolutely free, was that there is no ABC certification possible. Audit figures were not allowed. Therefore, there was a token amount which was charged on newspaper. That model has to change. This is one product where it is sold less than what it costs to make. How long can we make a product like that? So people should be prepared to pay a higher price for newspaper. And that, that will change the entire economics and profitability. How much do you think is a, before you say that, I think a Sri Lankan rupee is twice the Indian rupee. So, if it's three, three, like, so an Indian rupee would be about 1.5, one and a half rupees. That's beside the point. But come to the, the question I'm coming to is, how much do you think 
a, a newspaper should be priced to make it reasonably uh, profitable. The other question, as it is that you, uh, newspapers has no readership, if you're going to price it even higher, then even that will fall. So where do you make this balance? There are two things here. One is um, um, the direct variable cost of a newspaper of, uh, let's say, 20 pages or 24 pages will cost nothing less than 12 to 13 rupees. So at least people should be able to pay the cost of production for the cost of production. You know, people are happily paying for internet. People are happily paying for television, OTT platforms. So what makes you think that people are not willing to pay for the newspaper? I think they are just used to low price. It was a comfort zone. Secondly, today advertisers are not looking at large numbers. They are looking more at ROI of their advertising spends. So gone are the days when you can offer millions and you know millions of readers. I think advertiser wants engagement of their of their readers so that they get better response to the advertisements. And in India, there's something else which is very unique, which is that we need our newspaper hand delivered at home. We need to have the newspaper along with our tea. Hand delivery of newspaper is also expensive, isn't it? I don't yes. think that happens in many of the Western countries. Is that true? No, that's true. Uh, in India, again, this has been a practice and uh, uh, it is uh, door delivered. Um, come to think of it, the kind of processes the one newspaper goes through, the reporters go and collect stories, the sub-editors put it together and the editor goes through the story several times, verified. It's a lot of work, actually. It's a lot of work that goes into the credibility of the news that we report. Then you report in a certain manner that it's uh, easily readable and it's engaging. With all this, we are producing, we are selling a product at one or two rupees, which is quite unreasonable for the reader to expect. And that too, home delivered. But home delivery has been the practice in India. There is no other modality in India. The stand sales of newspapers are very low. It's mostly home delivered. Uh, I'm, I'm not, you, you are originally a Times of India man and I don't want to be critical. You don't want to answer to this if you don't want to. But this practice of selling a newspaper for one rupee started with the Times of India. I remember they're making a big, big, uh, uh, news out of it, saying we're going to deliver newspapers at one rupee. Uh, so I, I think it started there, and the others had to copy. What is? Uh, I mean, you've already committed on it, but do you have anything more to say? That how do you, how do we go back on this practice now? I think it suited that particular strategy suited at that point in time when the newspapers were our literacy rates were very low, and we were also trying to improve the numbers and advertisers were also looking at larger number as one of the criteria for advertising rates. Today, all these things have changed, you know? So one is, uh, one has to really look at the profitability of the newspaper, as you rightly said. So there, the unwanted numbers have no meaning to the publisher or to the advertiser. So raising the price, some may drop off. It doesn't really matter because then you are giving the la creme de la creme reader to the advertiser. I just want to tell our you viewers that you're welcome to send in your questions. Uh, you can send in your questions on the Zoom group chat and I'll pick them up and pose them to uh, Sri uh, Nainan and he can answer them as he wishes. Now, coming back to advertising, when advertisers become uh, the one that, uh, you know, it's a question of demand and supply. When a newspaper is so dependent on advertisers, then the advertisers start to dictate terms. I saw a very ridiculous thing this afternoon on TV. Uh, as you know, in Kerala, uh, TVs are also dependent on advertising. They are much more dependent than even newspapers, I would say. I saw something very ridiculous on TV this afternoon. As you know, Jai Hind is the official TV of the Indian National Congress. And I saw this news, I don't remember the time, but it was this afternoon, where the Jai Hind TV its analysis and its news readers were being very critical of the left-front government in Kerala, particularly critical of uh, 
Pinrai Bujian as the chief minister. And then they went for a commercial break. And the first advertisement on Jai Hind TV after this critical news about Pinrai Vijayan was an advertisement by the government of Kerala was where Pinrai Vijayan was being praised to the skies as though he was the answer to all uh, the, the problems of Kerala, that everything the good that has happened in Kerala was because of him. It seems so odd that just a few seconds after the newsreader was roundly criticizing, the analyst was criticizing uh, Pinrai Vijayan, should come an advertisement, which many may not even know was an advertisement, which was praising uh, him to the sky. So this is the, the, the what happens when you are so dependent on uh, advertising. That sounded very pathetic to me. Uh, let me move on. People today have become used to getting information for free. A newspaper almost free, you get your TV channels. You pay for it, but that was only recently. Uh, you, uh, you get a lot of information on WhatsApp and other groups for free. You get a lot of uh, online news portals, news channels for free, and some of them are very analytical too. I'll come to that later. So uh, should, advertise, uh, should information not be free? How can newspapers impose a high readership cost on newspapers? Information is available free. So free news is like free air. Information is the air that uh, supports democracy. So shouldn't it be free, Mr. Naima? I think um, the free can be an inducer to induce trial, but free can't be permanent. A lot of media companies have given a lot of things free for a limited period. Then after that, you have to pay directly or indirectly you pay. Today, what's happening with WhatsApp? You're paying indirectly because you have privacy at, at, at stake. They are making money out of your, your, your contacts, your time. So you are directly or indirectly paying for every medium. True, but they are not taking money directly out of your pockets. So there's a difference. It's when money goes out of your pocket that people feel unhappy. When the credibility becomes the differentiator. When it comes to today's, I think newspapers offer the best credible news than any other medium. And, and that's the purpose of news, reading newspaper today. Because it's been verified several times over before it is printed. There is no hurry to, to report a news in a newspaper, whereas websites as well as television channels are always in competition against time. Uh, that's very true. Uh, let me just move on. Uh, TV, we spoke about it very briefly. Uh, as you, I think that was what you were trying to say, that's what you pointed out, that the news continues. The platforms that uh, provide the news will change. TV came as a big challenger to the, to the newspapers. How much of a challenge is TV today to newspapers? 24-7 news, analysis, 8 o'clock, debates. How much are they challenged to newspapers? They have you riveted at times, don't they? When, whereas, whereas the newspapers don't rivet you as much as a TV. When television came in a big way in India, print was leading. It was almost having about 60% share of the advertising spends. Today, between TV and uh, print, it's almost, almost equal. In fact, in some cases, the, the television has overtaken print. But television is also going through the similar sort of a, uh, a disruption because people are moving away from television to other forms. Today, beat any media, you are in competition with 16 awake hours, eight hours to sleep, 20, out of the 24 hours, you can be exposed to any medium and that's your competition today. It's not television or it's any other sort of medium. It could be anything. I stick to television. Television is driven by TRPs. Uh, yeah. And TRPs is what decides how much revenue you'll get for your advertising. But we have seen the you know negative side of TRPs for many years, but recently we have seen it a great deal with what's happening with the Republic TV. How genuine are TRPs? If they're not genuine, how do we improve them? The, whether it is genuine or not, the real question is what alternative do we have? It's a sample. If it is done properly, I think TRPs make a lot of sense. That's the only way to measure the effectiveness of a particular television channel. The same thing goes with even newspaper for 
uh, the readership surveys. We don't know the, the correctness, the accuracy of these studies. There could be some gaps. It's quite possible. But we expect all these things to be run by professionals and integrity is taken for granted. Right, but can integrity be taken for granted? How do you ensure that uh, TV, TRPs are, the technology has improved so fast, so much. Uh, if it is an online news or if it's an online portal, I, I know how many people are watching me. I know uh, in, a, in a video that I put on YouTube, how many people have watched my program. Can that also not apply technology wise to TRPs and uh, TVs? When it comes to measurement of any medium, um, there are always, there are doubts about uh, the, these figures are reported correctly. This happens with radio, this happens with the print and television. And even on the in on, on online plat platforms also, this is a big dispute. How do you ensure that, is it possible to ensure at all that the social media becomes a responsible medium of getting news across? Social media is very powerful. In fact, the newspapers themselves use social media to, to gain uh, readership and also to push news. Um, I think it is how you use it. There are a section of uh, people in the society which tend to use the social media in a negative manner. Otherwise, it's, I would say that it's a very, very powerful medium and it is here to stay. And it's very popular among the youth. Um, so, you know, they, they will coexist with the traditional media. The reader is also a prosumer. He is producing and consuming. Whereas newspaper is produced by someone, you don't have a role in, in the newspaper except for the letters to the editor. You know, so whereas in social media, you are part of the content. Well, that's, that's very well put. You're both a producer of news as well as a reader of the news, consumer of the news. Uh, but the social media provides actually what the consumer wants. He wants news quickly. He wants news in width, not in depth. Whereas a newspaper provides no news in depth and not in width, as you told me yesterday. So it's, it's something that the consumer wants, is it not? So how do you respond to that? Yes. Um, you know, like I said, you know, social media is a matter of choice. It's not, not something which you can avoid only because it's uh, not as credible we can't discard social media. Social media has several advantages and one has to look at those advantages as well. The newspaper industry, if I may say, is panicking. Profits are under pressure. Uh, and how has COVID impacted on this already miserable situation? COVID came and the newspapers has uh, really panicked with COVID. How, how has COVID impacted? on a readership COVID, of uh, print. COVID, COVID was a big disruptor and COVID has affected both circulation and advertising revenue. Circulation of newspapers have seen up to 40% fall uh, decline and advertising revenue also have come down to 40 to 50% during the peak pandemic period. Now this is the revival time. Slowly newspapers have started doing better. Uh, I'll come back to my earlier question, which somebody pointed out. How do you encourage the youth? You, you mentioned, you answered it briefly, but I think that is the future because youth in India particularly constitute a very large proportion of the total population, uh, below 40% or 40% or so, I believe. Mm -hmm.